Okay. Um, so the, the, the why of Neuralink, uh, just to, to go over it, is I think it's important for us to address brain-related diseases. Um, the, the, everyone, if, they, if you survive cancer and heart disease, the odds are that you will have uh, some brain-related disorder. So it'll be like Alzheimer's or, or dementia. And if you don't, uh, friends and family will for sure. Um, and it, I think unless we have some sort of brain-machine interface uh, that can solve uh, brain ailments of all kinds, whether it's an accident or uh, congenital or any, any kind of brain-related disorder, uh, in, in, or, or a spinal disorder, if you know somebody who's uh, broken their neck or broken their spine, uh, we can solve that with a chip. And, and this is something that I think most people don't uh, quite understand yet. And we're going to go over in detail how this is possible. Um, but I, th I think there's, there's an incredible amount we can do to, to solve um, brain disorders, act, uh, damage, um, and, and all this will, will occur actually, I think, quite slowly. Um, so I do want to emphasize that it's not going to be like suddenly uh, Neuralink will have this incredible neural lace and start taking over people's brains. Okay. It, it will take a long time. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, and, and, and you'll see it coming. So getting, getting FDA approval for implantable or devices of any kind is quite, quite difficult. Um, and this will be a slow process where we will gradually increase the um, issues that we solve until ultimately we can do a full uh, brain machine interface, uh, meaning that we can in, in, uh, ultimately, yeah, this is going to sound pretty weird, but um, achieve a sort of symbiosis with artificial intelligence. Just to give you a sense of scale. This is how tiny the threads are. Uh, that is not even a big finger, that is a small finger. Um, <laughs> so the, there's a, these threads are just like, like I said, way, way smaller than a hair, um, and there's a thousand of them. And this is what, what the robot looks like. Um, it's, it's sort of a, quite, quite a complex device, but it, uh, it, it all comes down to a very tiny, tiny point. Um, so just, 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 we want to just like you see, you see the robot, the robot on the left, and um, and then the um, what looks like the needles for insertion next to a penny, but in fact the, the the actual needle that gets inserted is way way tinier. It's that little tiny thing at the where the arrow is pointing. That's actually the size of the, the needle. It's about 24 microns in diameter. Extremely, extremely small. Uh, it, it's so small you can't really even see it with, in the picture with the penny. And then this is uh, Uranium on Uranium. Uh, no, that's not really. Um, that's agar. Um, so you can get a sense for the uh, robot doing the electrode insertion. Um, that, that's a very zoomed in view. So they're all very, very tiny, and the robot is very selectively applying them very, de very delicately. Um, and, uh, and then this is what the chip looks like. So, this is action potentials. Um, so, e each one of those represents one electrode. So, there would be up to 10,000 of, of, uh, of, of these lines. Um, yeah, so, um, I guess, so, like, it's always difficult to say, this is going to be, a, there's, there's a lot more in this presentation. So, in terms of things that I think are important to, to bear in mind, this, um, I think, has a very good purpose, uh, which is to cure important diseases um, and ultimately to help secure humanity's uh, future as a civilization relative to AI. This is a, a high-energy pig. Um, all right. 
Gertrude, thanks for coming out. Um, so what you're, the, the beeps you're hearing are real-time signals from the neural link in Gertrude's head. So this neural link connects to neurons that are uh, in her snout. So whenever she snuffles around and touches something with her snout, the, that sends out uh, neural spikes, which are detected here. Um, and so on the screen, um, you can see uh, each, each of the, the spikes from the 1,024 electrodes. And, and then if, you, if she, yeah, she snuffles around, touches this snout in the ground, or you kind of feed her some food, pigs love food, um, then uh, you, you can see the neurons um, will fire much more than when you're not touching the snout. And uh, that's what's making the, the beeping sound. All right, cool. So as you can see, uh, we have a healthy and happy pig, um, initially shy, but obviously high energy and, and uh, uh, you know, kind of loving life, and uh, she's had the implant for two months. So this is a healthy and happy pig with an implant that is two months old, two months old, and working well. Yeah. This is Pager. He's a nine-year-old macaque who had a Neuralink placed in each side of his brain about six weeks ago. If you look carefully, you can see that the fur on his head hasn't quite fully grown back yet. He's learned to interact with a computer for a tasty banana smoothie delivered through a straw. We can interact with the Neuralinks simply by pairing them to an iPhone, just as you might pair your phone to a Bluetooth speaker. The links record from more than 2,000 electrodes implanted in the regions of Page's motor cortex that coordinate hand and arm movements. Neurons in this region modulate their activity with intended hand movement. For example, some might become more active when he moves his hand up, and others when he moves it to the right. By recording from many neurons and feeding their activity into a decoder algorithm, we are able to predict Page's intended hand movements in real time. First, we calibrate the decoder by recording neural activity as Pager uses the joystick to move a cursor to targets presented on the screen. As he's playing this game, we're wirelessly streaming, in real time, the firing rates from thousands of neurons to a computer. Using these data, we calibrate the decoder by mathematically modeling the relationship between patterns of neural activity and the different joystick movements they produce. After only a few minutes of calibration, we can use the output from the decoder to move the cursor instead of the joystick. Pages still moves the joystick out of habit, but as you can see, it's unplugged. He's controlling the cursor entirely with decoded neural activity. And uh, what you're seeing there is, it looks like the matrix, but that, that's uh, actually, the, the, that's a real output of, of neural signals. So that, that's, that's not a simulation or a, just a screensaver or something, that those are actual neurons firing. That is one of the, what one of the readouts looks like. And um, here you can see uh, Sake, that's one of our other monkeys, uh, typing on a keyboard. Now, he's, this is telepathic typing, so to be clear, this is the, he's not actually using a keyboard, he's moving a, a, the cursor with his mind uh, to the highlighted key. Now, now technically, um, uh, we can't, can't actually spell and... Uh, <laughs> so I don't want to oversell this thing, uh, <laughs> because that's, uh, that's the next version. <laughs> um, so the... Uh, but what's really cool here is, is um, Sake the monkey is moving the mouse cursor using just his mind, moving the cursor around to the highlighted key, and then spelling out what we, uh, you know, what we want, what we want to spell. But um, and then uh, so so this this is uh, something that could be used for, for somebody who's who's say. Uh, uh, quadriplegic or tetraplegic uh, human, um, even before we make the, the, the spinal cord stuff work, uh, is being able to con uh, control a mouse cursor, control a phone, um, and we, we're, we're confident that, you, that uh, someone who is, has 
basically no other interface to the outside world would be able to uh, control their phone better than someone who has working hands. So, yeah. And I mentioned upgradeability. Upgradeability is very important because uh, our first production device will be much like an iPhone 1. And um, I'm pretty sure you would not want an iPhone 1 stuck in your head if the iPhone 14 is available. Um, so it's going to be, it's, um, be able to demonstrate full reversibility and upgradeability so you can re remove a device and replace it with the latest version or if, if it stopped working for any reason, um, re replace it. It's, it that's, that, that's a fundamental uh, requirement for the device at Neuralink. And I should say both Saki and Paige were upgraded to our late, uh, latest and greatest implants. Um, so uh, that, that's been really over a year and a half now that, that Paige has had f f the, f the first implant and then the upgraded implant. So this is a very good sign that it lasts for a long time with no uh, observed ill effects. I think it's also important to show that um, Saki actually likes doing the demo. Um, <laughs> and it's not like strapped to the chair or anything. <laughs> so uh, it, it, it's, uh, yeah, so um, the monkeys actually enjoy doing the demos because they, and, and they get the banana smoothie and it's kind of a fun game. So um, oh, we, I, I guess the point I'm to make is like we care a great deal about animal wel <laughs> welfare. <laughs> and um, and uh, I, I'm pretty sure, we, like our monkeys are pretty happy, you know, so. As you can see, he's a quick decision maker on the fruit front. <laughs> so, so for our f the, the, the first two applications we're going to aim for in humans um, are restoring uh, vision. And uh, the, the, I think this is like notable in that even if someone has never had vision ever, like they were born blind, we're, we believe they can, they, they can, we can still restore vision. Um, so, uh, because the, the visual part of the, the visual part of the cortex is still, still there. Um, so, uh, yeah, even, even if they've never seen before, uh, we're, we're confident that they, they could, they could see. Um, and then the, uh, the other application being in the motor cortex, uh, where we would initially enable someone who uh, has no ability, to, or almost no ability to operate their their muscles. You know, sort of like a sort of Stephen Hawking type situation, and um, enable them to operate their phone faster than someone who has hand, working hands. So our first steps along these dimensions for our device is what we call the N1 implant. It's a size of, of about a quarter, and it has over 1,000 channels that are capable of recording and stimulating. It's uh, microfabricated on a flexible thin film arrays that we call threads. It's fully implantable and wireless, so no wires, and after the surgery, uh, the, the implant is under the skin and it is invisible. <laughs> 